Hello everyone and welcome to another most excellent game from the 2019 FIDE World Cup. Uh, again, a lot of you have requested this one. Uh, Alireza Firoja versus uh, Daniil Dubov, uh, current uh, World Rapid Champion and also uh, a second to Magnus Carlsen during the World Chess Championship match last year in London. So, uh, if there's a, obviously if there's one thing you don't want to do, you don't want to take this match into the Rapid section. You want to, uh, well if possible, you want to uh, close it uh, d during the Classic section. Uh, so let's check it out, a clash between the two young 2700s, or, or maybe Dubov still isn't 2700, maybe he, uh, I believe he's a few points off 2700, like 2690 something. Uh, but still, two, two extremely strong players. So let's see uh, how the game went with e4 uh, by Alireza. Uh, c5, the Sicilian defense is on the board, which is not a surprise since he was a uh, part of Magnus Carlsen's team during the preparation for the World Chess Championship. Uh, knight f3, knight to c6, and now bishop to b5, the Rosolimo, not going for d4. Uh, with g6. Uh, castles by Firoja uh, and the bishop to g7. Uh, we have c3. Uh, knight to f6, preparing to castle, we have rook to e1, defending the pawn, and uh, dub of castles, uh, with h3, uh, and the queen to b6, asking white what do you want to do with this bishop. Uh, first, Alireza pushes a4, uh, defends it, and now a6, asking do you want to maybe bring it back, bishop uh, to f1, do you want to go bishop c4, maybe capture on c6, uh, and here uh, Alireza trades with a bishop captures, and here... Uh, there is one game from 1992 where Queen captures on c6 was played in a game uh, Vladimir Kostic versus uh, Stefan Bogberger. Uh, a game ended in a draw, but here after b captures on c6, uh, it's already as of move 9 that we have a completely new game. Uh, so let's see how it went. We, uh, e5 by Firoja. Uh, attacking the knight, knight to d5 and now a5. Pushing the queen further back, preparing queen to a4. Uh, after after d6 is played, as black has to play d6 at some point, uh, you want to at least somehow try to develop this light square bishop. If you allow black to push, for example, a5, then black can uh, develop the light square bishop using this diagonal, which is not something you want to do. So queen back to d8, and now d3. Uh, we have d6 by black, and now queen to a4 as planned, uh, going after, well, uh, the c6 pawn. Uh, we have d captures on e5, and now you could go for queen captures on c6, then black would go after your d3 pawn, uh, so uh, Dubov decides to trade on e5. We have knight captures, and here bishop captures on e5. Uh, we have rook captures on e5, and now queen to d6, defending the pawn, attacking the rook, uh, rook back to e1, and now bishop to f5. Uh, finally, the bishop has been developed, the rooks are now connected, uh, and black can start organizing uh, his forces. Uh, and here knight to a3, asking black, do you want to capture on d3? And uh, you could capture on d3, but it uh, turns into a really complicated game. For example, if you play bishop captures on d3, then bishop to h6 comes with an attack on the rook, and once the rook moves, then you get uh, rook a to d1. And now you have the rook on this, uh, diagon uh, on this file where there are a lot of black pieces, and you cannot cement with c4, you have to play it, but then you just get a trade and you give up your light square bishop. For example, knight captures, bishop captures, and after queen captures on c4, you get the disposition. It's uh, playable, but uh, th th there are better moves for, bl for black than capturing, such as the one uh, Dubov chose. Rook f to e8, now bishop to h6 will not come with an attack on the rook. Uh, and knight to c4, uh, attacking the queen, uh, forcing the queen to move back. We have queen to c7, still keeping an eye on the c6 pawn, and now bishop to e3, offering the d3 pawn for the c5 pawn. Uh, but Dubov decides to trade with knight captures on e3, rook captures on e3, now defending the d3 pawn, and now rook a to d8, uh, with a double attack against the pawn here, and now knight to e5. Uh, defending uh, the, the pawn here and now with a double attack against the c6 pawn. And it's not easy to defend this pawn, for example. Uh, if you try rook to c8 uh, to defend it, then you get queen c4 with uh, this queen captures on f7 threat, and after you defend this, uh, because you have to, then you lose the a6 pawn. Uh, on the other hand, if you try something like bishop to d7 to defend it, then you get queen to f4, uh, again, with the same idea, uh, you're going to attack the f7 pawn, and once this is defended, let's say you go back, then knight captures on g6, just wins the pawn, 
uh, as your queen is attacked on c7, you have to trade here, and now the knight nicely guards the pawn back. Uh, if you try e5, if you want to take this variation further to kick away the defender of the d3 pawn, you get rook a e1. You don't really care about black capturing here because your rook is hanging. So after f6, knight h5, now threatening knight captures on f6 with a nice fork, and all in all, well, after that is defended, you're going to go rook to f3, and again, black cannot capture here. Uh, if you capture, you lose on f6 with check, if you capture with the rook, then you lose the bishop. Uh, so all in all, uh, it's not possible to defend the c6 pawn. Uh, Dubov found f6. Uh, he decided to trade queens, uh, well, w giving up a pawn, but it's a double c pawn, so hopefully uh, it will be it will be all right. And I forgot to mention the first game of the match was drawn where Dubov had the white pieces. Uh, queen captures on c6, now queen d6. Uh, of course, Dubov wants to trade here uh, to, to fix his pawn structure with queen captures, e captures on d6, and knight back to g4. Rook captures on e3, f captures on e3, and now Dubov can grab uh, 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 the pawn on d3, but first he goes rook to b8, now threatening the b2 pawn as well, uh, he wants to activate his rook. Uh, with knight captures on f6 with check, king g7, and now knight to d5. Uh, with rook captures on b2 as planned, and now e4. Uh, bishop back to d7, and now comes rook to f1. Uh, preparing rook to f6 to start gobbling up pawns from behind. Uh, with bishop to e6, now attacking the knight, uh, and also now rook to f6 uh, will not come with the threat of captures, uh, but now knight to c7, attacking the bishop and the a6 pawn. Bishop back to d7, and here uh, white white could have gone for c4, uh, and uh, well, in, in expectation of rook to a2 going after the a5 pawn, now you go back, knight d5, prepare rook to f6, and after rook captures on a5, you're going to go rook to f6. Bishop to c6, you're going to capture here, for example, captures, captures, and now white has two very dangerous connected pass pawns in the center, uh, whereas black has a passed a pawn, uh, but this would obviously be uh, extremely good for white. Uh, but uh, uh, Firoja found a different line, he played knight captures on a6 first, but this allows black, uh, 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 well, a sort of a defense, he, bishop, uh, sorry, rook to b7, not allowing knight to retreat via the c7 square, also you cannot retreat here as the pawn is covering the b4 square, and now black's plan is to just uh, keep harassing the knight, uh, rook to a7, uh, rook to b7, rook to a7, rook to b7, and claim a draw and take the game into the rapid section, as Dubov is the world rapid champion. Uh, so c4, and now bishop to e8 first, a very important move, uh, otherwise uh, if you play uh, rook to a7 right away, knight to b8 would come with an attack on the bishop, so you have to clear the bishop first, uh, and now after the bishop moved, like I said, now if you play something like king h2, rook a7 is just a forced uh, draw, you, you will get a repetition of moves, knight here, rook b7, knight back, rook a7, knight back, rook here, and, and so on. Uh, so here we would have a draw by threefold repetition. Uh, but here, Firoja found uh, a very interesting line, which kind of doesn't allow this repetition. He played e5. Uh, and okay, Dubov said, okay, that's that's a move. Uh, the, the point is, if you capture on e5, uh, the knight can then capture on c5. So you don't want to allow this. So Dubov continued with his plan, rook to a7. He wants to draw and uh, take the game into the rapid. Uh, knight to b8 and the rook to b7. Uh, Firoja repeated, we have rook, knight to a6, rook to a7, and the knight to b8. Here, rook to b7 by Dubo. And uh, here, if Firoja repeats, then uh, again, we have a draw by threefold repetition, but uh, Firoja had something else in mind. So feel free to pause the video here and try to figure out what uh, Firoja had in mind in this position while I give you a couple of seconds. Uh, so, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on figuring out what Firoja had in mind. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, if you found rook to e1 or e captures on d6, congratulations. Uh, and, of course, uh, as both of it works, uh, the point is if rook e1, uh, pawn captures pawn is the next move. And if pawn captures pawn, uh, rook to e1 is the next move. 
Uh, so here, uh, E captures on D6 was played, and now you kind of have to capture the knight, otherwise the knight can just go back uh, uh, into the position. D7 is also coming, so a lot of problems for black here. So you have to accept the piece sacrifice. We have rook captures on B8, and now rook to E1. The point is you want to go rook to E7, followed by D7. And here, king to F8, uh, with rook to E7, and now rook to D8, not allowing D7. Uh, but now the other pass pawn starts marching forward. We have a6, uh, rook captures on d6, and now a7, preparing a8 queen, uh, and here rook to d8. For some reason, Dubov doesn't like uh, rook to a6, uh, putting his rook behind the pass pawn to guard the a8 square. He does it by playing rook to d8. Uh, and here we have rook to b7. Now the threat is rook to b8, uh, just blocking the uh, a8 square, and then you want to queen this pawn. Uh, which uh, you could prevent uh, by playing rook to a8. It's a very nice move because you will never be able to play rook to b8, uh, otherwise rook just captures on a7. Uh, however, Dubov tried bishop to c6 here, and uh, okay, the a8 square is uh, covered twice now. Uh, rook to c7 attacking the bishop, and the pawn of course if the bishop moves, bishop back to e8, and now uh, not going after the pawn right away, that can always be captured, king to f2. Now, uh, uh, Firoja wants uh, to get his king uh, as uh, well uh, as deep into the position as possible to help out with the attack. Uh, get rid of this pawn and then start pushing these two connected pass pawns. Uh, so, with g5 by black, king to e3. With h6 and now g3. And here, uh, again, uh, what do you play here? Uh, bishop to g6 was played. The, the point is, uh, if you play a rook to a8, uh, it's uh, not gonna not gonna do you much good. You're you're just giving white moves. You're just allowing white to get uh, as deep as white wants into the position. Uh, so here, uh, uh, Dubov tried a different idea. He tried an active plan: bishop to g6, just going after the d3 pawn. Uh, but it doesn't work. So feel free to pause the video once again and try to find the winning idea for Firoja in this position. Uh, again, while well, I give you a couple of seconds. <clears throat> So for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, uh, truly a, a remarkable endgame player. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, rook to b7. The threat is now rook to b8, and the point is that black no longer has a rook to a8. If you block with rook to a8 now, uh, rook to b8 comes with check, so <laughs> there, there's no bishop on e8 to block check. Now you just have to trade, and the white gets a queen into the game. So uh, here Dubov played rook captures on d3 with check, king to f2, and now brought his rook behind the passed pawn, but still rook to b8 comes with check. So rook b8 check, king to g7, and now a8 queen. Uh, black of course has to trade, rook captures, rook captures, and now bishop to d3. Going after the pawn, but uh, Firoja just uh, prevents it. And now it's rook and three pawns against bishop and three pawns. Extremely difficult to hold to a draw, but of course Dubov will try. King to f6, uh, we have king to e3, and now bishop to f1, going after the h3 pawn, uh, with h4, captures, captures, and now king to e5, preventing the white king from entering deeper into the position, but now rook to a6. Now you want to trade the c4 pawn for the h6 pawn. Uh, as there's nothing you can really do to prevent this. Uh, bishop captures on c4, we have rook captures on h6, and now bishop back to e6. Uh, we have rook to g6, making now room for the past h pawn, uh, and bishop, sorry, that's a king, uh, bishop to f5. Uh, we have rook to g1, not allowing anything to cross the g file, uh, and king to f6. We have h5 by Firoja, and now bishop to h7, blocking the past pawn. Uh, and now h6. Uh, we have bishop to g6 now, again blocking the rook and the pawn, but the problem is that the king can never uh, go after the pawn. You can't go this way, and uh, well, you can never touch the g7 square. If you go, for example, to g8, then the rook will just capture the bishop. So the black king is pretty much hopeless here. So king to d2, we have king to f7, White black just has to repeat moves, king c3, we have king f6, king c4, bishop to f7, check, king captures on c5, you've eliminated the pawn, bishop back to g6, and now king to d6. Uh, we have king to f7, and now king to e5, uh, a crucial move to win this endgame, as now uh, the king can no longer make a move, uh, as there are no squares left. Uh, that you can go to uh, to defend your bishop here. So you have to play with the bishop. Uh, bishop to d3, and now, finally, rook to g7 check. You are winning the h7 square. 
king f8 and it was in this position as Dubov played king to f8 that also uh, he resigned the game. He resigned as there is nothing more to do here. King f6 would be played after black makes any move, you're just gonna go h7 and here you have to give up your bishop and now it's just a, a, a very quick mating sequence to follow. So yeah, after uh, king to f8, uh, Dubo resigned and a brilliant and uh, a very important win for Alireza Firoja taking down uh, Daniel Dubov, uh, Carlsen's second, uh, not, not an easy task and it was good that he could do it before uh, taking the game into the rapid section as Dubov is just a beast uh, in, in rapid chess. Uh, so yeah, uh, Dubov is out of the competition and I don't know who, I haven't checked who Firoja is facing in round 3 but it, it's gonna be, <laughs> be very exciting as he gets uh, one step closer uh, to that uh, candidates tournament as if you've missed it for some reason uh, the the two uh, uh, the players who the two players who do best in the uh, FIDE World Cup get uh, get a seat in the FIDE candidates tournament to the, determine the challenger of uh, Magnus Carlsen so yeah, uh, that's the game I do hope you enjoyed it uh, I would like to thank uh, Kenny Archibald Christian Pope uh, Corentin Solier uh, Mara Jens Mark Jensen and Twitch streamer for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot I really appreciate it as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, uh, and uh, I will see you soon. Uh, continuing the coverage of the World Cup, checking up on your wonderful suggestions such as this one, uh, and, and, well, doing what we usually do. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your Sunday.